In this video tutorial, we will learn how we can fine tune or train YOLO V10 model on a custom data set. YOLO V10 is the latest state of the art real time object detection model that outperforms all the other YOLO models in terms of speed, accuracy, parameters, efficiency. So let's get started with it. So now here you can see this is the YOLO V10 rep uh, GitHub repository. You can find all the details over here. Like you can see over here, latency and accuracy trade-off is being presented over here. And what is basically latency? Uh, latency is basically the time taken to do object detection on an input image. So now you can see here, we have latency in milliseconds and here we have the average precision. So you can see that uh, YOLO V10 models outperform all the other YOLO models uh, in terms of accuracy. Uh, here you can see to average precision. And in terms of uh, latency as well, like you can see that uh, inference latency of YOLO V10 uh, model is uh, much better as compared to other YOLO models. Like you can see that uh, YOLO V10 model take less time to do object detection on input image. Like you can see over here, uh, like other YOLO models take very much time to do object detection on an input image, which can be seen over here. So the inference latency of YOLO V10 model is very good as compared to other YOLO models. And over here you can see size and accuracy trade-off is being presented and here you can see number of parameters and this is represented in millions. Like you can see that uh, YOLO V10, uh, in YOLO V10 we adopt efficiency driven design strategy which reduces the computational overhead and we optimize various model components as well. So in this case of YOLO V10, less number of parameters are used as compared to other YOLO models and YOLO V10 also outperforms all the other YOLO V uh, models in terms of accuracy as well. And you can see over here, YOLO V10 comes with uh, six different models, YOLO V10 Nano, small, medium, large, extra large over here. And here you can see if, if you want to train YOLO V10 uh, model on a custom data set, all the steps are provided over here. You can check this guide, how you can do predictions on an input image using the pre-trained YOLO model weights or fine-tune YOLO model weights as well. Plus you know, here you can find all the details how you can export the YOLO V10 model into uh, Onyx format or in some other format as well. And here you can see if you want to do the citations, all this stuff is being presented over here. So you can check this GitHub repo and uh, some uh, all the uh, persons who have contributed into this repo are also mentioned over here. Uh, what updates they have done like uh, uh, like you can see over here, like this uh, GitHub uh, user has integrated deep sort object tracking as well. So all these contributions are mentioned over here. And like uh, this GitHub user has uh, added a hugging fist demo over here, collab demo, all these details you can find over here as well. Okay. And in this uh, video tutorial, we'll be fine tuning the YOLO V10 model or training the YOLO V10 model on personal productive equipment data set. And you can find this data set on RoboFlow. So like you can see all the details over here. So we will have seven different classes in the, our data set, which include safety mask, dust, uh, safety mask, vest, uh, safety boots over here. Like you can see over here, we have the safety boots, uh, safety helmet, vest, uh, safety marks, eye glasses, all these classes we will aired. So there are seven different classes in our data set and our data set is very much balanced in terms of uh, which you can find all the details in the health check over here. So the data set look good and we will be using this data set. Uh, so to export this data set into RoboFlow, you just need to um, to export this data set from RoboFlow into your Google Colab notebook. Uh, you need to create an account on RoboFlow and and easily create an account on RoboFlow. Then you just need to click on download data set and download. So either you can download the data set on your local system, but you can just click on show download code and you can just convert this data set into your V8 format. Currently, your V10 format is not available over here. So we can use your V8 format. And here now, you, if you just uh, add this code into your Google Colab notebook, you would be able to to download this data set from RoboFlow into the, your Google Colab notebook. Okay. So now in the first step, you need to clone the YOLO V10 GitHub repo. I have already trained the YOLO V10 model on this personal directory equipment data set because if I start training over here, this will take so much time. Uh, but I will explain you all the results that we got. Now we we'll install all the required packages uh, that we require to do object uh, direction or uh, to fine tune the model. So these are the all the packages that are required and these will be installed one by one. 
Then over here in the step number three, we'll download all the pre-trained model weights. So let's wait until all these packages get installed. Or you can see all the required packages are installed. It's necessary that you install all the required packages before you start training the YOLO V10 model on custom data set. So now if I just go over here into the YOLO V10 repository and click over here, you can find all the model weights over here. So you just need to copy the link address and uh, you just need to add all these addresses over here and this will download the uh, each of the model weights into uh, your uh, into what this uh, folder over here. So a weights folder will be created over here and inside this we will have all the model weights, the V10 model weights added over there. Okay. So now, uh, uh, this, now you can see over here, a uh, weights folder is being created and you can find all the yellow V10 model weights over here. Okay, so now we'll download the data set from RoboFlow into this Google Colab App Notebook. Okay, so you can simply copy this code over here and just add this code over here. So this will download the data set from RoboFlow into this Google Colab App Notebook. So this will take some time. Now you can see the data set is being done downloaded over here. So this will take two more time over here before it gets to 100%. Okay. Okay. So now you can see we have the data set over here. Uh, one thing you, before you go ahead, you need to do over here is uh, you need to rename this folder and you just need to open a data.yml file over here. Uh, as you open a data.yml file, then you just need to update this paths over here. So you just need to click over here and copy path over here and just add those paths over here. So these are the two things that are must to do. Okay, so you just, you just need to update these two paths over here. And then you just need to set this folder as your current directory again. Okay. And then we will train the Yolo V10 model, Yolo V10 model on the custom data set. So now you can see that we are doing object detection. The mod is training currently. Uh, we are training the Yolo V10 model for 50 epochs and the bad side is being set to 16. Uh, the bad side is being set to uh, in the two powers. So uh, if you have a very large data set, then please make sure that you reduce the bad size to eight. Okay, so this is the bad size basically mean how, in how much chunk you will pass the data the model for the training okay then i'm just using yolo v10 nano model and here i'm just passing the link to the data.yml file in the data.yml file i have uh, the pass for the training and validation images set okay so now uh here i've trained the yolo v10 model for 50 epochs on personal protective equipment data set and you can see that these are the uh, precision score uh, we have bot over here and here we have the recall score over here and here we have the mean average precision uh, with I use 50% uh, or 0.50 and here we have the mean average precision when the IOU varies from 0.5 to 0.95 okay uh, so if the precision score is low it means that there are many false positives and if the recall score is uh, low it means that there are many false negatives but in all the cases the precision score looks good in except in a shield case the precision score is a bit low so it means there are not many false negatives okay so now these are the basically, uh, this graph basically after training, we have these result graphs. So now you can see that uh, this graph shows uh, how many instances of mask we have in our dust, team, uh, dust mask we have in our training set. So these are not the images. These are the number of annotations for the dust marks we have in our training data for the IVR. And you can see for the shield, we have very low instances or annotations uh, for the shield shield class we have very low instances or annotations so now that is why you can see that uh, the equal score is not good and precision score is also low as compared to other uh, classes okay and here you can see that we have the precision point curve so now you can see the precision score over here at different confidence scores okay so this is the precision score over here these are the recall score at different confidence uh, thresholds over here and this is the precision and recall curve and here we have the F1 on confidence curve. So F1 confidence curve basically tells us the trade-off between the precision and recall scores. And here we have the confusion matrix. 
Uh, so let us see that we want to normalize. So now you can see that uh, the confusion metrics show us that um, the model predicted uh, like in 282 cases when there was a dust mask, the model predicted correctly, while 26 times when there was the user or the person was wearing a dust mask, the model was unable to predict anything, okay? And uh, for the glove, 551 times when the user, uh, the person was wearing a glove, the model predicted correctly that the person is wearing a glove and one time when the person is wearing a glove, the model uh, does a false positive prediction and predicted as it as a eye wear. And um, three times when the person is wearing a glove, the model predicted it as a protective helmet. Three times when the person is wearing a glove, the model predicted it as a safety vest. And one time when the person is wearing a glove, the model predicted as shield. So these are all the false positive. And 72 times when the person was wearing a glove, the model predicted as a uh, background, like nothing, the model was unable to detect anything, so this was a false negative. Similarly, you can go for other classes as well, and these are the normalized scores, like 92% of the times when the person was wearing a mask, a dust mask, the model predicted correctly, while 8 per times, percent of the times when the model was wearing, uh, when the person was wearing a dust mask, the model was unable to detect anything. Okay, so 67% of the times when the person was wearing IVR, the uh, model was able to detect correctly while well, 33 percent of times when the person was wearing um, eye wear the model was unable to detect anything so you can see this chart over here as well and over here you can see the mean average precision is continuously improving so we have trained the model for 50 epochs but you can see that uh, there's a continuous increase so if you just train the model for 100 epochs you can see a better mean average precision score and um, all this and you can see the loss is continuously decreasing so these are the model predictions on the validation batch. So we have not used the validation even just for the training. So it's always better uh, to have a look and see how our model is performing on the validation batch. Okay, and the result looks quite promising. So after training, I placed the model weights onto my drive. So I will directly download the model weights from the drive into this Google Core App Notebook over here. Okay. So I have already model weights now and you can find the weights over here. So now you can see here we have the best model weights. All right, I will download a random image for that model testing from my uh, drive into this Google Call App Notebook. And let's do the testing. We are doing object detection. The button mod is not training or prediction. So all the prediction, we have a confidence schedule above 0 0.25 uh, will be, uh, the bonding boxes will be drawn around them. And we want to save the output. And we are just using the best model weights we have bought from the training. and and uh, the test for the test, we are using this image one, which I have downloaded from the Google Drive. So now you can see we are able to detect the protective helmets, but the gloves are not detected. Uh, so if we train the model with high epochs, the results might work. So now test on some other image as well and see what results we are getting over there. So now you can see over here, we are able to take the safety vest, protective helmet boards, uh, safety vest, protective helmets. So the result over here looks quite promising. So now we'll download some uh, random demo videos from the drive into this Google Core Lab notebook and let's see what results do we get on these demo videos. So now you can see over here, now I'm doing testing on these demo videos over here. So let's see how does it works. So now you can see that the complete video is being divided into 310 frames and we are doing object detection on each of the frame one by one and in the output we will get a combined uh, output video. Okay. So meanwhile the, the, the object detection on this input video gets complete so it's done. And I have already uh, displayed the output video over right here. So let me just download this. Okay, so it's downloading. Let me navigate my screen towards the output. Let me show you this. So now you can see over here, we are able to take the safety vests, uh, protective helmet, protective boots, and the results look quite promising to me. And these are the good results. Okay, so in the same way, I've tested on the other video as well. And uh, here we have the results over here. So let me just uh, download this as well. 
okay let me navigate my screen towards it so now you can see that this is another video and we are able to detect the safety webs protective boards very good the result will look very promising to me uh, so that's all from this tutorial thank you for watching bye bye